My name is Professor Johnson, and today I will be talking about the empirical rule. Now, the empirical rule states that almost all data falls within three standard deviations of the mean, mu. So, to represent this, let's draw our normal curve. Mu is our point of symmetry, and if you make three tick marks above and below, each tick mark will represent a standard deviation away. If you go below the mean, you're really subtracting a standard deviation. Okay? Now, the empirical rule goes in the following order. You have 68%, 95%, and 99.7%. This is all an approximation. Okay, so just keep in mind, this is only approximating. It's not a true, exact answer. All right, 68% comes first. If I show this on the screen here, within one standard deviation, you have 68% of the data. So you can see this area under the curve, that represents within one standard deviation. Now, with 95%, I'll do that in blue, as you can see, you go out another standard deviation. You could imagine that you went out two hops away from the mu, the mean. Um, in blue, so if you shade all of this, that would represent 95% of the data. And then here, let me use, I'll use pink for 99.7, three standard deviations collects almost all, almost all of the data, you can see 99.7%, which is why we don't go out for standard deviations, because it would be kind of pointless to go all the way out that far. Now, I made a distribution up. I say over here, using x is distributed normally, 14 comma 6, approximate the percentage for each of the following. And we have A, B, and C. First things first, I want to draw a new curve. Oops, that was a little funny. Draw the curve the best you can. Now, this notation right here that I highlighted, X is distributed normally, 14 comma 6. 14 and 6. These numbers represent the mu and the sigma, the population mean and the population standard deviation. It always goes in that order. So if you think back to, in general, what I wrote, I'm going to start with 14 here. 14 I'll put right in the center. Now I need to go one standard deviation to the right, two standard deviations to the right, three standard deviations to the right, and then I'll go left one, two, and three standard deviations as well. Okay, now I'm doing this to get an idea of where these questions A, B, and C, where a two comes from, an eight, a 20, and a 32 comes from. So 14's here. Now, standard deviations above are going to be six. So 14 plus six would bring me to 20. 20 plus six would bring me to 26. And then 26 plus 6 would bring me to 32. As you can see in A, B, and C, part of those numbers showed up, and that's on purpose so that we can approximate some percentages. Okay, now let's go below as well. 14 minus 6 would give you 8. 8 minus 6 would give you 2. And 2 minus 6, now you have a negative 4. All right, so let's start with part A. With part A, we're asked less than 2. So let's mark where 2 is and shade less than. So I want the percentage relating to this value to the left. All right, now if you think about it, that is one, two standard deviations away below. Now we know from the empirical rule that if you're two standard deviations away, that relates to the 95% rule. 
Okay. So if you think about it, if you mark where 2 is and if you go above to 26, I know 95% would be about there. Now the area under the curve is always 100% total. If you take 100%, subtract 95%, you will get 5%. That's telling me that 5% is left in these tails overall. I need to split 5% in half, so that will be 2.5% goes in both of these end tails. And if, as you can see, 95 plus 2.5 plus 2.5 adds up to 100% total. Now, what percent relates to just less than 2? It would be right here on the very lower tail. That answer would be 2.5%. Okay. Now, let's go to Part B. Part B says between 8 and 20. Okay, 8 and 20, I'll use a different color. I'll use the green color, and I'm going to circle 8 and 20. As you can see, 8 and 20 are within one standard deviation. One standard deviation of the mean would be 68%. As you can see, 8 and 20, if we draw a quick little sketch just for its own sake, I'll do that right down below here. We'll mark 14 here, 20, and 8. As you can see, that answer would be 68%. That automatically was between. So we've solved B entirely. But let's also think about what would be on the end tails here. So pause the video and think about it for a second. If you think about it, 100% and you subtract 68%, you will get 32%. And again, by symmetry, you need to have half on each side. So 32%, divide that in half, you would get 16%. So 16% goes to the left tail, 16% goes to the right tail, and if you added those three values up, 16, 16, and 68, it would add to 100%. So we know that we have total area under the curve, 100%. So I could ask other questions. I could ask, like, what's the percent less than 8? That would be 16%. I could ask what's more than 20. The percentage more than 20 would be 16%. And the in-between comes from straight from the empirical rule. 68%. Alright, now let's do part C, more than 32. And if you think about where 32 is, if we go back to our main sketch, I'll use pink now, starting at the mean, you go above 1, above 2, and then 3. 32 is 3 standard deviations away. As we said at the beginning, within three standard deviations would be 99.7% of the data. So I'm going to do another sketch here. I'll draw the curve as best I can. And I'm going to mark 32. 32 is three standard deviations away. I'll also mark the mean is 14 right in the center there. And three standard deviations to the left, that would be, oops, negative four. Okay, in the in-between, I know that's 99.7. If we think of more than, you should be thinking of shading to the right, because you want to be more than 32. And I need that little sliver up to the right. Now, I know 99.7 is that area in the middle between 32 and negative 4. If I take 100 and subtract 99.7, I would get 0.3%. So I know that 0.3% goes in each of these in total. So I need to take 0.3% and divide it in half. That was kind of squished. I'll, I'll write it down below. 0.3% 
and divide it in half would give you 0.15%. So I know that 0.15% would be there, 0.15% would be to the right. So my final answer for more than 32 would be 0.15%. I could also ask other questions like what is less than 32%? If I know more than 32 is 0.15%, let's think about let's think about this. What about less than 32? If you had to think of the percentage less than 32 and look at that picture. There's going to be two ways to do this. Now we know more than, so you could do 1 minus, sorry, you could do 100% minus 0.15% and that would give you the lower portion all the way to the left. Okay, because 100% is under the whole curve, so that would leave you with, let's see, 99. 85%. That is one way to do it. Another way to do this, so or, you could add up, if you see to the left, if you added those together, 99.7% plus that lower portion tail, 0.15%, that would also give you 99.85%. And that references less than 32. And if you put less than 32 and more than 32 together, as you can see, those together would give you 100%. So I know I checked my answer properly. Thank you for watching the video.